today's video is about four ways that you can increase autophagy during your fasting. Okay, autophagy is widely known as one of the largest benefits of caloric restriction and fasting. Now, in case you didn't know, quickly, autophagy is where your body breaks down components of cells that it does not need anymore in an effort to use them as fuel. Now, in order to understand how to drive autophagy up, we need to learn what kickstarts it in the first place. And with that, we look at some interesting fasting research. Okay, so what we do know is that being a little bit hungry activates autophagy. We also know that exercise activates autophagy. But when it comes down to being hungry, it epicenters around something known as ghrelin, which is a hunger hormone. And when you start looking at the research, it's fascinating. We've seen in studies with rodents that when they cannot produce a hunger hormone, when they cannot produce ghrelin because they've been basically modified to not, when they fast, they go hypoglycemic. Their blood sugar goes so low that they might even die. Now this doesn't happen to humans. Why doesn't this happen to humans? Well, it doesn't happen to humans because ghrelin, when we get hungry, it signals for autophagy to activate. And when autophagy activates, it breaks down components of cells we don't need anymore and turns it into blood sugar. So when we don't have ghrelin, our blood sugar would drop, 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 drop like it did with these mice. But since we produce this ghrelin, what happens is we can go through autophagy. So understanding this, it leads us to our first one, okay? Being able to drive up more autophagy when fasting, you want to be moving around and exercising during the period in which you are the most hungry with your fast. So if you wake up in the morning and you're hungry and you normally kind of grit your way through it, doing a little bit, it doesn't need to be crazy, a little bit of moderate exercise is going to amplify that autophagy response because the ghrelin is signaling for you to be hungry. And that ghrelin is also signaling for maximal autophagy. I shouldn't say maximal, but increased autophagy. If you exercise, it's widely known that exercise drives autophagy even more than fasting. I have to be candid here. So how do we get the best of both worlds? When you're a little bit hungry, do a little bit of exercise. It's also when you are protected the most from muscle breakdown. So exercising is the first one while you are a little bit hungry. It's very, very simple, but it can definitely improve that autophagy response. Number two, this is gonna come as a shocker. We might think that we need to get adapted to fasting and that when we're no longer hungry with a fast, it means that we're good at fasting. Now that's true, okay, that's a perfect adaptation example. You're fasting so much that fasting isn't difficult and you don't get hungry anymore. The problem is that that means your metabolism has adjusted to that and that you might not be getting the same benefit as you were in the beginning. But it's okay because it's very easy to fix. The way that you course correct this is when you start recognizing that you're no longer hungry when you're fasting, you need to take a little bit of time off. Maybe it's a few days, maybe it's a week, maybe it's two weeks, maybe it's a month. It doesn't matter, everybody's different. And then go back to fasting. And at first, if you think about it incorrectly, you'll think, oh man, I lost my ability to fast, I'm hungry again. Wrong. That hunger response is doing amazing things for you. That hunger response is activating autophagy. That hunger response is helping you burn fat more. Okay, so it's very, very important. So one of the best ways, the second way that you can increase autophagy while fasting is to take the occasional break from fasting so that you actually get hungry when you do fast. That's kind of wild, right? But it makes a huge difference. Fasting shouldn't always be comfortable. Sometimes you want it to be uncomfortable, and that discomfort is what triggers the adaptation, including autophagy. I also popped a link down below for Thrive Market, who's a sponsor on my channel. The reason it's relevant with this video is I have specific foods that I like to eat when I'm fasting, and I've created like fasting bundles and low carb bundles and everything through Thrive, so you can kind of see what I eat and things like that. So I thought it was practical and it made sense with this because 
Maybe you're taking some time off from fasting and you don't know how to eat. I would typically recommend eating relatively low carb if you're adjusted to fasting. It may not be a good idea to go back to the well and have you know, 600 grams of carbs unless you're very active, right? So I pop that link down below because you can sort by diet type, by uh, low carb, by keto, by sugar-free, by gluten-free. Very, very easy. Plus, you get a $50 free gift. So check that link out. It's the top line of the description just below this video. No pressure. You totally don't have to. They're a big supporter of this channel, and it helps this channel out if you help out the sponsors that make all this content possible. But hopefully, it gives you more benefit than just helping me. Hopefully, you get something out of it too, which is going to be good price groceries delivered to your doorstep plus a massive discount. It's that link down below. The next way that you can get maximum autophagy out of your fast is by doing one of two things. Actually, three things. I'll give you three options because there's different varying levels of sort of expense that can go with it. You can sit in a sauna if you have one in your gym or if you have one at home. Now, the idea behind a sauna, just to give you the context here, is you increase what are called chaperoning proteins. This means that when you're going through the folding and unfolding of proteins and the remodeling of organelles and all this stuff that happens even with autophagy, Saunas and fasting go hand in hand with that autophagic flux, with that whole process. So they work very, very well together. So when I'm fasting, I almost invariably like to sit in a sauna because I feel like I'm getting more metabolic benefit and more autophagy benefit. Now, that's a given. We have research to back that up, but not everyone can afford a sauna and not everyone can just have the space for one. I understand that. The interesting research suggests that if you're sitting in a hot bath, you can get a similar benefit. And everyone can sit in a hot bath, right? I do it all the time. Like if I don't feel like going out into the sauna or it's nighttime, I go sit in the bath, I take a bath and I, I fill it up to my chest or whatever, and I get it pretty hot, not scalding. And then typically I meditate in there and I kind of suffer through it and I kind of make it like a sauna. So that's a nice way to be able to get the benefit. If you do this at the end of a fast, you'll also find that you're not as hungry anyway. It just kind of like gets your mind occupied in the right way. But rest assured, you're getting a nice autophagy benefit. Another thing you can do is use what's called a sauna blanket. Okay, now those are things that you can get on Amazon. They range from a couple hundred bucks to a couple thousand dollars, depending on what you're doing. But a sauna blanket is just a more space effective way to be able to get those benefits. They're typically infrared, so it's a little different from a dry heat sauna as far as heat shock proteins go. But still, they get up to you know, 170, 180 degrees, and you're close to the heat source and the light source, so you're getting that benefit there. So that's just a more cost-effective, space-effective way if you don't want to sit in a hot bath and you can't build a big old sauna or don't have it at the gym. That leads me to the fourth way that you can increase autophagy, and this is very, very cool. If you allow yourself even one day to go low carb prior to your fast, that will lessen sort of the obstruction to autophagy in some ways. I'm not saying that carbs are going to block autophagy, not at all. But when insulin is elevated, you do impede autophagy during that time period. So if you eat a bunch of carbs on Saturday all day, and then Sunday you start a fast, well, you have to work through, lower those insulin levels, and you have to kind of burn through those carbs before you start getting the benefits of the fast. So if you're going to fast, I do recommend the day before, it might not be a bad idea to go low carb. Maybe keto, maybe close to keto, but you're not doing a keto diet, you're just going lower carb for a day so that your autophagy response is kind of already kick-started. You're already kind of starting a little bit of this so that when you go into the fast, your insulin levels are already low and you start maximizing and capitalizing on the benefits of a fast that much quicker. This is another reason why I don't recommend fasting every single day, because you adapt to it and you don't get that autophagy response. I recommend fasting like two or three days a week so you can still have periods of elevated insulin, elevated mTOR for growth and repair, and periods of suppressed insulin, lower mTOR, higher autophagy. What that simply means is you're balancing that yin and yang of repair that comes from growth and carbs and insulin, but you're also balancing it with rejuvenation and recycling that comes from low insulin, low mTOR, and higher autophagy and fasting. So with this, just to recap, okay, you wanna to try to exercise and move around when you are most hungry. Number two, you want to be hungry when you fast, and if you're not hungry when you fast, you need to take some breaks from fasting so you do get hungry. Number three, high heat exposure during your fast. The later in the fast, the better. Hot bath, hot sauna, infrared sauna blanket. And number four, try to go low carb the day before going into a fast to maximize the benefit. As always, keep it locked here on my channel and I'll see you tomorrow.